Um, it's so wonderful to be here today, um, and uh, thank you, Harbor Front Toronto, for this fantastic um, opportunity to think about your waterfront a bit more. Um, I don't have an, uh, an image of the islands because I want you to shut your eyes and think about it. In opposition to this winter, which has been horrific, imagine the islands, which are a rare bucolic landscape, surrounded by the city like a pearl. One can experience a mini vacation just 15 minutes from home, yet the lead up to those 15 minutes is currently less than pleasing. You might even call it inhumane. Characterized by outdated buildings and poorly considered logistics, it is, lo it is no longer working according to plan. The new ferry terminal has an opportunity, even an obligation, to become a new civic icon befitting Toronto and to become one of Toronto's greatest green treasures and to befit its greatest green treasure um, and a, a new public space that is the, the pride of the city. Historically, the Toronto islands and the city have been thought of as one connected landmass. Civic Canopy and Harvard Landscape seek to reunite islands and city by merging the varied natural landscapes of the islands with the urbane and dense man-made landscape of Toronto. They also seek to channel the new harbor front design principles recently adapted and implemented, which have given an architectural language and new civic life to the water's edge. For the new ferry terminal, we propose an expansive shade canopy that crossbreeds constructed, green, aquatic, uh, with space, uh, aquatic spaces with spaces of utility and play into a new hybrid landscape anchored by Civic Canopy, the new Jack Layton Ferry Terminal. The roof intersects an alley of waterfront trees and, and a grove of park trees mimic, mimicking their natural, their material and performative qualities and their diurnal change from leaved to bare. Civic Canopy is constructed of timber timber fins that act like branches, angled to shade sun in the summer months and allowing the sun in during the winter, along with the composite timber and steel column uh, trunks that parallel the tree trunks. The boardwalk promenade continues along the length of the site. One of the biggest problems of the site uh, is, is its current location of the ferry terminal and the pinched condition between the ferry terminal and the Weston Hotel, which prohibits um, ample um, massing of people. We chose to relocate the terminal to the end of Bay Street and to move it south towards, towards the harbor to provide expanded space for the movement of vehicular and pedestrian traffic that overtake the terminal in the summer in a location that can become a great new civic landmark in the city at the end of Bay Street. New ferry slips are simply constructed in the harbor using driven wood piles, while the existing slips will become a verdant wetland. To solve the second biggest problem of the site, the interruption of the promenade by the ferry terminal, the boardwalk passes through the ferry terminal building, lifting over the embarkation queues to allow uh, dual occupation of the site. Passersby and commuters share the facilities and design features of the ferry terminal. The lifted boardwalk and canopy acting as a gateway to the islands. Rather than segregate modes of movement into separate zones, the area in front of the terminal utilizes shared space. Wheeled vehicles and pedestrians come directly to the front door of the terminal linking the city, bringing the city back to the water's edge. Um, uh, and share a curb-free, stone-clad surface which is more grand plaza than utilitarian roadway. Bay Street, as we've heard um, a lot today, long terminated by a dark and menacing tunnel, a foreboding and shadow-casting footbridge, um, and mound that prevent any visual and physical access to the water, will be transformed into a new point of reference and pride for the city. The lift of the canopy and boardwalk allow views to the water and ferries while simultaneously announcing itself as, as a new piece of civic architecture. It is both an end point and a beginning. The terminal itself is part of, part of a larger tapestry. I'm sorry, I skipped a slide or slide is not here. Um, hmm. 
Interesting. Um, the terminal itself is, um, you're supposed to imagine our uh, slide of the plan, which is uh, over on the boards, uh, part of a larger tapestry of landscape elements that merge to form a new Harbor Square Park. The park samples ecologies and shoreline conditions from the island, reestablishing the link between city and islands, and providing a taste uh, to even the casual passers-by. Rather than, f uh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's the plan, sorry, that was a little too soon. Um, and so you see the different ecologies of the island from, uh, from west to east. Um, and, uh, and here, rather than sequester ferry go goers into limited access holding areas, the new terminal will allow commuters unfettered access to park prior to boarding by utilizing new technologies that allow for advanced ticket purchase and by using timed tickets ferry riders are finally freed from lines and holding pens. Um, a geyser discreetly embedded uh, within the structure of the canopy erupts prior to each ferry departure, calling travelers lost in the diversions of the park to their gate. From Waterside, the new terminal presents itself at Toronto's portico, a graceful and welcoming new front door. The canopy overlays and links green greenscape, hardscape, and waterscape. It provides shade for private car and taxi drop-offs, covers tree planters whose edges provide ample seating. Its columns provide automatic ticket machines um, at each of the back sides, uh, eliminating lines at ticket windows. The ticket and information office, a semi-enclosed cafe, and a conditioned waiting room and fully accessible washrooms are all constructed from deformations in the canopy structure. Vehicular access, which we feel is very important to bring up to the ferry terminal, is via roadway on the east side of the building, vehicular access for, to the terminal itself, and vehicular access to the, to the ferries is via roadway on the east side of the terminal, blending into the paving and landscape. The space under the canopy is expansive enough not only for waiting passengers, but also for farmers markets, food trucks, and landscape features. These include a play hill, a hammock field, a mist room, and pool, and wetlands. Nearby, ample bike racks are interspersed within a grove of trees. The boardwalk gently ramps over the queuing area, providing a new vantage point of the island and ferry terminal floor for passers-by. One of the other big challenges of the project is the seasonal shift in temperatures and population from summer to winter. Civic Canopy proposes to augment its environments over the course of the year through latent and active environmental modifications and seasonally adjusted programming. It will become a year-round destination which feels equally considered during the winter as it is accommodating during the summer. In summer, all necessary activities are captured under the canopy. In winter, the architecture of the building and the programs sheltered by it transform to provide warm environments or outdoor programming that embrace the season. Oktoberfest beer gardens, winter markets, ice skating rinks, and springtime performances all take shelter under the canopy. In summer, its timber fins, the timber fins of the canopy provide much needed shade. Trees grown from the terminal floor intersect the canopy through large circular, circular cutouts. The park and the terminal coexist. They became one design feature. The columns evolved from the fin system itself provide locations for ticket machines. The conditioned waiting room is formed through a deformation in the shade structure. The mist room anchors the east end of the structure. Market stalls, food trucks, and vehicle drop-off sh all share the space with waiting commuters and casual passers-by who need no tickets to be in the terminal. An LED ticker lines the edge of the boardwalk above announcing imminent arrivals and departures in addition to the water geyser. In winter, the terminal transforms into a bustling winter market with a hot air cafe, grow house, and ice cave all defying or embracing the seasonal condition. Winter can be beautiful. I know that you don't think that right now. Um, but we, we propose to tap into the beauty of the seasons and to grow the park design out of those uh, naturally occurring um, beautiful conditions. A mist room, for instance, provides a naturally cooling mist cloud in summer. Kids can frolic in the shallow pool from which the geyser clock erupts to mark the imminent departure of each ferry. During the winter, 
Those same mist nozzles provide the material for the natural construction of an ice cave, which eliminates the wind and improbably becomes a comfortable, sunny environment. The west end of the terminal contains the cafe, a hammock field, and partially covered play hill. During the winter, an inflatable structure expands from the cafe portals to become the hot air cafe. A cozy, slightly surreal wintertime bar and cafe sure to become one of Toronto's most treasured seasonal locations. In winter, the grow house, covered with an ETFE clear plastic ceiling, is naturally warmed um, and sunny, the perfect place to wait for a ferry or incubate plants for the park. Uh, the roof dips down on the south side to become an amphitheater overlook accessed by the floating public boardwalk a place to watch an impromptu performance or gaze out to the water and distant islands. The boardwalk elevates to allow for unimpeded ferry access under and enjoyment of the shade and, and structure above by casual passersby. Unique system of laminated wood fins are angled in such a way as to block the high summer sun and allow the low winter sun in to warm the space below. The fins are connected with a series of patch fittings that form a stressed skin, a wholly self-supporting structure devoid of conventional framing elements. The columns are extensions of the fins themselves, utilizing double curvature to create lateral stability. A series of uplights attached to the columns will cast the canopy in a soft glow at night. And here you see the systems that make up the ferry terminal, the expansive roof that shades in the summer and lets light through in the winter and forms a ceiling of several uh, of the uh, terminal's um, program spaces, the tr intersecting trees and park, turning the entire terminal into a part of the park, um, and then the ground plane, which is activated with plantings, water features, um, underneath of which um, we have a, a series of uh, pipes that take the lake water in to warm uh, the the pavement in the summer and keep it uh, sorry cool the pavement in the summer and keep it warm in the winter. And lastly, during the summer, the lighting, which I mentioned before, will be cool and provide a sense of uh, sense of, of of coolness, defying the the season. Um, and during the winter, uh, it will warm up to keep you warm. And with that, I will um, let uh, bring Walter Hood to the podium. Good evening, everyone. Charles talked a lot about the, the new civic plaza or new civic space that she would arrive about. And I would like to sort of return back to the landscape. The harbor means to embrace. It means to protect. And I was really quite curious when I first started looking at maps of Toronto and to begin to sort of see that you're held in this tight embrace by this amazing landscape. That's why the city is probably here. The first image we saw was a plat in the landscape with water leaking down to this big, big lake. And what we'd like to do is sort of create this intertwined hybridity between park and between a new civic place. Imagine the 21st century plaza is now part of this growing landscape. Charles spoke about the ferry and the landscape experience. And I'd like to speak, speak about how we sort of see the landscape. I would hope over the next 100 years, this is what Toronto's harbor would look like. A very biodiverse place, a place that's not like the outer edge, a place that's protected, where you have this amazing aquatic life, but people are intertwined with that. This is very easy to do. Over the last century, you built a wall. As you filled out, you built a wall, and you didn't let flux happen. With the harbor, flux is able to happen and you could actually contribute to reducing the level of phosphorus in this great lake because I think this lake is one of two that's doing very poorly with phosphorus levels. As some of the team spoke before, the island is of a curiosity and we too would like to sample the island but not sample the social and cultural aspects of it, but its ecological context. As you go over to the island, you find different ways in, that people relate to the water. And this is because you're able to relate to the water because you're in a harbor. And so we're taking the various pieces of this experience and beginning to sort of understand how you can get multiple use. How can you make an iconic landscape? Are there ways of sort of creating a familiar? We found beautiful parks. We found beautiful roads. We found ways that people got out in the landscape. And one curious thing that I find as American, if you go along the entire lake, everyone has access. 
So this notion is how do we not create a private edge? And by doing this, we decided to sample those various pieces, but also think about where this new civic space is and that unlike the last hundred years where the city was built and water used to leak down, we know you have a new storm water plant and you take water out somewhere else, maybe people become this new hydrology. People moving down to the water against these new programmatic spaces. So I'm going to take you through the basic site plan moving from west, east to west. If we start here, we're introducing a large lily pond. Imagine sitting out on the deck with nothing but green around you, a very, very uncacophonous landscape. Um, as you make your way around the new Civic Plaza, connecting directly back to the city, and you have multiple routes in which to come through this new forest of uh, mixed uh, deciduous trees. As you make your way further through into the landscape, the park has actually pushed itself up against this new civic space. And these erratics have broken through the ground because we really want you to know that this is not the real landscape, that this is a fabricated landscape. Everything is sitting on piers. You make your way further, there's a small garden that will sort of attach to the housing complex here. And the promenade continues and we have a new beach here for the residents. You can look out of your house now, your back window out into a beach. But we're juxtaposing this with a wetland. And so these juxtapositions create tension as you move from one landscape to another. And for us, it's not about what these landscapes look like per se, but how they perform, how people use them, and how in turn the lake and harbor performs back against it. This is clearly shown in the sections as you move out. Here's our walkway promenade. You can see the new civic space along here and our wetland over the new piers, and you're able to walk out in this area. The wetlands actually peer in to this new ferry terminal, as well as a mixed forest coming right up to the edge. If you're looking back out, waiting on a ride, you see these erratics, children climbing all over them, vegetation, people moving. This is a place where the city meets the water. It's a place where it's not just about getting on a boat, it's not about just staying here in the residence, but it's about this kind of interchange that happens in a city. In the next section, again, the promenade. Coming along into the park, we have another erratic, but this erratic, you're possibly able to go into it. There's a large play area on the outside. We have some parking for residents that is, that's a residual of what was there at one time. And again, this fabricated landscape rolls out and provides a different experience to the waterfront. As you see closer here, the relation between all of these pieces, a new garden, a new hill, a new inside, and a new outside creates a thrilling new environment. Now, if you're experiencing the park and you're looking westerly, you can actually see the new gardens, a new whirlpool fountain that during the summertime is interactive, where people can come and sit around its edge and interact with it. And it's really different than um, what's happening out in the marsh and within the lake. You also can see all the way down the waterfront and see the intensity of planting and different landscapes that you have. Just like currently in the winter, these landscapes change. Go back. And during the winter, we see Things can be frozen over, and again, Toronto, Torontians, people who live in Toronto, <laughs> have different ways to interact with the landscape. And then lastly, as we're moving down to the section where we have the housing complex, where we really have all of these uses commingled together, we have a new beach area, and we have a series of low waterfalls. So when you're down kayaking, you actually can experience this really sublime experience of aeration of the water. Again, by aerating, we can move the water. Again, we can increase the biodiversity, but have people experiencing different ecological zones. Here you're elevated, here you're directly on the water, here you're in the water, and here you're beside the water. Currently, there's a small waterfall on one end. We'd like to take that around the entire cove. And here's a view of a classic juxtaposition, looking back towards the terminal. I'm looking easterly. I have my promenade walk here. I have a beach along here. And here I have the wetland. And I have kayakers. And it's something that you would probably see in a bay, something closer to the ocean where you have all of these uses mixed. But you have the possibility to actually have a lot of aquatic activity here that says something about the place. And then more closely, just having that 
strange hybridity of uses together will give this place a completely, completely new identity and will make it very different than any other place along the waterfront. And lastly, I'd like to leave with this image of the garden. The garden is something that we'd like to superimpose within this larger park. And this is a space that you go into. And we see this mostly for children. This is not about more apparatuses and things like that, but this is about ecology. This is about green. This is about plants and animals. And it will give the kids a place to sort of go along the waterfront, but will also provide a respite for other people moving along the waterfront. Thank you very much. Thank you.